Hello friends and welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am your host Tom Downey. The offseason is pretty much over. Yeah, there might be another roster move or two, but we're kind of in that weird part between the end of the offseason and yeah, there's mini camps and OTAs, but it's not really the preseason either. So let's take a look back at what the Cowboys did this offseason and hand out some grades as well. Now, when this offseason began, the Cowboys had about 50 million in cap space available to use, of course. They did not have a first-round draft pick, and they had one kind of important free agent out there in Demarcus Lawrence. But, of course, there were also coaching staffs, and changes to be made on that front. So we'll go through the coaching staff changes, off-season defense and special teams as well, and then give out some grades as well. So on the coaching staff side, unlike last year, there wasn't the massive overhaul. There was one big change. Linehan's out. Kellen Moore comes in as the offensive coordinator. I'll give it a C. It's Look, incomplete is probably better, but that's cheating. That's not the point of these. Kellen Moore is a complete wild card because we don't know what he's going to be like. I have some cautious optimism for Kellen Moore, but it's reasonable to have some concerns about him as well. Of course, Garrett was not extended. I like that move. And John Kitten, which I also liked, is, new, is the new quarterback's coach. But a common theme throughout this entire offseason review, a lot does hinge on Kellen Moore being a better coordinator, hopefully a significantly better coordinator, than, than Linehan was last year. So how confident are you in Kellen Moore? Great on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being you think it's a disastrous hire and they would have been better keeping Linehan, and 10 being you think Kellen Moore is going to be the, ne the next great young offensive mind. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Now we'll go through the offseason review here. We'll begin with running back, where Rod Smith, Jameza Lawali, they were both free agents. Of course, Olawali came back at fullback, and they drafted two different running backs as well. Entering the offseason was my number seven need. It was always the backups that needed to be to be the focal point there. Of course, Rod Smith is no longer a member of the Dallas Cowboys. At the time, the running back depth chart was, of course, Zeke at one. Rod Smith, Olawali, the free agents, and they had Jordan Shun and Darius Jackson. That's still the case. They didn't do anything until the draft beyond, of course, re-signing Olawali. Elliott remains your featured back there. Tony Pollard is your number two. Mike Weber is your number three. He'll battle with Darius Jackson and Jordan Shun. If healthy, I think Weber wins that job. So the Cowboys did find their running back depth, although... I wouldn't be opposed to bringing in someone along the lines of JSI. I don't know if the Cowboys are going to go that route, but depth was the need, and they took care of it at least in a satisfactory way. Over to wide receiver now. Cole Beasley, Tavon Austin were both free agents, and Terrence Williams was, if you forget, on the roster. And then he was, uns well, maybe not. I guess the option wasn't picked up, but read between the lines. T. Will got cut. He, has, he had years left on his deal. So they kept Tavon. They lost Cole Beasley and added Randall Cobb. So, again, here's what that depth chart looked like at the time, at the end of the offseason. Cooper and Gallup, they weren't going anywhere. Cole Beasley, Tavon Austin. It was a little bit unclear how many of those two would be back in three if you want to include Terrence Williams, who, of course, was cut. Now things have changed a little bit. They brought in Randall Cobb. I think at minimum that's a pretty lateral move if you want to include the salary cap. Maybe it was a better move there for the Cowboys. Tavon Austin's there. They added... Uh, John Vay Johnson and Jalen Guyton as undrafted free agents. But for the most part, the receiving core stayed the same, just swapping out Randall Cobb for Cole Beasley. And, of course, you're hoping for development from Michael Alp. I think I think that'll happen this offseason. But did the Cowboys get better at wide receiver? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Let me know what you guys think there in the comments section. If you're not including, including the assumed developmental player, which I think is kind of cheating here, I think they're about the same. I want to see Randall Cobb stay healthy. Yes, Beasley's made some not-so-kind comments to Buffalo media about the Cowboys, but I think he and Cobb should, could produce similar numbers relative to the amount of time as both teams will throw the football. Let's go then to tight end. I thought it was a fairly noteworthy need here, and that was despite having only Jeff Swim as a free agent. That left Blake Jarwin, Dalton Schultz. I think for the most part, the Rico gathers Hive has you know, whittled away. So with Swaim a free agent, he of course left to go to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Blake Jarwin, Dalton Schultz, they needed some stability or a, another young long-term option. The Cowboys went old. They brought back Jason Witten, which no one saw coming. It's an interesting move, and I'm very curious to see how it pans out. Maybe the Cowboys don't have their long-term option. Maybe it's Blake Jarwin, maybe it's Dalton Schultz, but the seemingly ageless Witten did buy the Cowboys time at tight end. 
to see how Jarwin and Schultz develop this year. And if it doesn't work out, if they don't show much growth, then you try again maybe next year in free agency or next year more likely in the NFL draft. But it was a very interesting move there by the Cowboys. To the offensive line where there was one big red flag for me, that was at swing tackle. Cam Fleming was a free agent. Of course, he was brought back. Many of us liked the depth on the interior of the offensive line. And then the Cowboys said, now nah, we're going to double down on the O-line. Remember, Cam Fleming's a free agent. Marcus Martin's a free agent. They had Parker Anger. He's now been cut. In his place comes in Connor McGovern. He'll compete with Xavier Suofilo as well at the left guard spot. Cam Fleming is your swing tackle. Mitch Hyatt's there. He might make the roster as a, another potential long-term swing tackle. And if everyone stays healthy and shows growth, looking at you, Sewell and Lael Collins, offensive line should be pretty good. But again, growth isn't a factor here in the offseason review because that's supposed to happen. This is about roster moves and all of that. So what grade am I giving the Cowboys offense? I'm going to give it a B+. It's, I'm happy with it. It's not a home run offseason. I think that would have been going crazy and like signing Tyler Eifert and you know maybe getting a more notable backup running back. But it was a good offseason on offense for the Cowboys in terms of the moves that they made. Cobb and Witt and Pollard were probably their three biggest ones. And that's intriguing to me. It's very intriguing. I like keeping Cam Fleming, but in the end, this is a very common theme overall for this offseason. You're banking a lot on Kellen Moore being the answer at the offensive coordinator spot. I think the talent is fine on offense, but the coaching needs to be better on that side of the ball. So let me know what you guys think. Grade the Cowboys offseason moves on offense. A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. We'll move then to the defensive side of the ball. The number one thing for me. Demarcus Lawrence was a free agent. They re-signed him, thankfully, and then Randy Gregory got suspended, and it was just, oh, God, of course it happened. Kerry Hyder was brought in. He'll play some interior defensive line, possibly, too. They also traded for Robert Quinn. So the overall defensive line depth chart, here's how it was entering the offseason. A lot of free agents. Tank, of course, was the big one. We'll get to defensive tackle there in a little bit. But defensive end-wise, you had Dorrance Armstrong. Randy Gregory was someone you were counting on. Then he gets suspended. So the Cowboys make some, I think, shrewd moves. They go out, they trade for Robert Quinn, gave up pretty much next to nothing in that deal. And then they double down in the draft, too. They take Jalen Jelks in round seven, Joe Jackson in round five. Interesting moves. Now the Cowboys have a good problem to have at defensive end. They got too many bodies there. Even if you want to include Tyron Crawford at DT, there's a lot of different options there for the Cowboys, even if players stay, even if there's a few injuries, excuse me. So what was the single best move the Cowboys made this offseason? Maybe it was firing Linehan. Maybe it was Randall Cobb. But for me, it's a no-brainer. It was re-signing Demarcus Lawrence. Yes, that counts, by the way. He was the focal point of your defense. He's one of the premier NFL pass rushers. I know it was expensive. It was a move the Cowboys absolutely had to make if they're trying to win games in 2019. Moving into defensive tackle here where David Irving and to a lesser extent Karan Reed and Dayton Jones were all free agents. And David Irving, as we said for months leading up to it, he was never going to come back to the Cowboys. Now, you were still then looking for some impact at defensive tackle. Of course, you have Tyron Crawford there. The Cowboys' big move was to add Christian Covington and to draft Tristan Hill in round two. Now, I would have been okay waiting until round three for a defense tackle, but the Cowboys have high hopes for Tristan Hill, and with no first-round pick, he's the focal point of their draft class. Malik Collins is still there when he's healthy. He's often banged up with a knee issue, but if Hill can show some flashes in year one, that's going to be a promising sign there at defensive tackle. Of course, Antoine Woods is still there. He's under contract, so they did upgrade in terms of actually being on the field at defensive tackle, even that Irving barely played. At linebacker, there weren't very many needs. Yeah, Damian Wilson was a free agent. We kind of all assumed he was going to leave. The one big question mark, though, was what would happen to Sean Lee? And, of course, Sean Lee took a pay cut. Now, it's a very interesting situation here because Damian Wilson was the starting strong side linebacker last year. Of course, Jalen and LV, don't want to overlook them. They're fantastic. The depth was fine. You didn't have to add anybody. That's what the Cowboys chose to do. They said, you know what? We're going to lose Damian Wilson. That's fine. They brought back Justin March Lillard as well, who was an RFA. And then Sean Lee is your new strong side linebacker. We'll see how that works out. And then they signed four undrafted free agents. Luke Gifford's the one that jumps out the most to me now. But we'll see what happens on that front. But linebacker, they were in great shape to begin with. And frankly, 
Find a better trio at linebacker in the NFL if you don't include the actual, like, pass rushers like Vaughn Miller. I don't know if you can. Cornerback, meanwhile, they were in very good shape with their top four. But number one, you got to have depth at cornerback. And looking ahead long term, you couldn't keep all of them. It just was not going to work out. It's not going to work out because you can't pay Byron Jones big money and Chidobe Awuzie and Anthony Brown. And Jordan Lewis will probably get more playing time somewhere else. So at the cornerback spot, you weren't necessarily looking for a new starter in 2019, but you were looking for some depth options and maybe starter development down there. And that's what the Cowboys, I think, got this offseason. They draft Michael Jackson, and I'm very intrigued by the signing of Chris Westry. We'll see how he develops. Both those guys are closer to lottery tickets than surefire things, especially Westry. But for the Cowboys, it wasn't a huge need. It was near the bottom of my needs list, and I think they did a satisfactory job. It just become might become more of a bigger need down the road for the Cowboys. But safety was the interesting spot. The top three guys, Jeff Heath, Xavier Woods, Kevon Frazier, in no order, were all under contract. The Earl Thomas rumors did not go away all the way up until he was signed by the Ravens, and then a couple of you asked if the Cowboys could trade for him, which, I mean, that never made any sense. The Cowboys needed one of two things at safety. They needed either A, a clear and obvious upgrade at strong at one of the safety spots, or they needed some more depth. And the Cowboys went the depth route instead, which is something they've done for years now at safety. Xavier Woods is locked in at free safety, and he's kind of upset the way the Cowboys had the interest in Earl Thomas and the way the fans had interest in Earl Thomas, too. Jeff Heath can play free safety and strong safety, and he'll compete with George Iloka and then maybe to a lesser extent Kevon Frazier and Donovan Wilson to be the starting strong safety. So the Cowboys have options at safety, but the draft by the way it should have in a dream scenario could have fallen. There were plenty of safeties there. Now what would you guys have done differently this offseason if you ran the Cowboys? You're in charge. You're playing the role of Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones and Will McClay and Jason Garrett. You're just the, the czar of the Cowboys. What moves would you have done differently? Maybe you fire Jason Garrett. Maybe you go do something different on offense or defense. Let me know in the comments section. I think by now I've made my point clear about the safety position. So overall for defense, I give it an A-. minus. The only big miss... I think, was not getting a clear upgrade at safety. And that's not the end of the world. That's why it's an A-. minus. And most importantly, you re-signed to Marcus Lawrence. The minute the Cowboys did that, I had a tough time seeing them get going anything lower than an A- minus there. A smart move by the Cowboys, a needed move. It's a very good unit that continues to have its stock pointing upward. So grade the Cowboys' moves on defense only. A, B, C, D, or F. I kind of expect most of you are going to throw in an A there in the comments section. We're not forgetting you guys. Special teams as well, where Tavon Austin filled both rows for the most part. I guess Cole Beasley was kind of a factor there as well. But of course, both Austin and Beasley were free. And then now, some more juice on returns. And I like that move there by the Cowboys. Tony Pollard comes in. He'll offer some more speed on kick returns. But the one big red flag for me, this is why it's a B-, and this could change, obviously, Where's the competition for Brett Maher? Uh, there's really no reason to not do it. And if Maher wins the job, great. But he's actually fairly old. He's a lot older than you would think for a quote-unquote rookie kicker in the NFL. He's going to turn 30 this offseason. You brought in more speed for returns. I hope the coverage units play better. But I was perplexed, to say the least, that there was no competition brought in, at least as of now, to help push Brett Maher at the kicker spot. So before we get to my final grade, grade the Cowboys off as an A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I suspect there will be many A's, but overall, I thought this was a good offseason by the Dallas Cowboys. Maybe not the dream offseason, but not a disaster either. So for me, I'm giving it a B+. There was nothing more important than re-signing Demarcus Lawrence this offseason, and the Cowboys did that. And they didn't totally break the bank either. The big red flag, and maybe the big question mark is maybe a better term for it there. They're banking big time on Kellen Moore as the OC. If it pans out, awesome. If not, it's probably going to be because Moore wasn't quite prepared and ready for that offensive coordinator role. And then I'm not going to put too much stock into it, but you can make a pretty strong argument. Maybe the Cowboys should have gone all out. Did what the Rams did last year. Go out and sign and Indomitian Sue and Earl Thomas and go big in free agency and push all their chips in for this offseason. 
Instead, they kind of tried to keep that long-term flexibility. I don't think there's a right or wrong route there. You can win doing both ways, but I wouldn't have mind going all in if I were the Dallas Cowboys. But let me know in the comment section, what's your grade for the Cowboys offseason in 2019? Hey Cowboys fans, thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.